Education Account Manager. And I'd also like to introduce uh, Rosemary TG, uh, my consulting engineer for FileMaker Incorporated as well. Today's webinar is entitled SIS on iOS, Taking Your School Data Mobile. The need for more detailed K-12 student information is growing as schools strive to comply with district, state, and national performance standards. While student information systems are an important component of student assessment, they generally lack two essential capabilities. One missing capability is consolidating multiple types of assessment data to acquire a complete view of student performance. The other is enabling teachers and staff to pursue ad hoc investigations to isolate specific factors affecting student performance. Schools can acquire both of these capabilities by augmenting their SIS with FileMaker Pro based software solutions developed in-house or by outside FileMaker developers. A powerful, flexible, cross-platform programming environment, FileMaker easily imports information from multiple systems and allows administrators and teachers to easily query the data and produce flexible reports. This webinar will show you exactly how you can leverage FileMaker to extract data from your SIS and take advantage of it on your iOS devices. We will build a student tracking mobile solution from scratch on the computer and then deploy it to an iPad in real time. We will show you how you can easily track students and help them get to their classes, bus, etc. Then we will show you some finished K-12 solutions on the iPad to give you some real-life examples of how you can take your student information system to iOS. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any, at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, 888-259-8414. During today's presentation, you will have the opportunity to type in questions. Let's talk briefly about how to enter a question. Simply go to the control panel, click on the question section to reveal the question section, and enter your question, and then hit send. We will cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. FileMaker is a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple Computer that helps organize, create, custom manage, and deploy custom business solutions for iPad, iPhone, Windows, Mac, and the web. FileMaker products are sold worldwide and, and are deployed in, by many types of organizations, from departments and large businesses to government to nonprofits and education. Because FileMaker technology is easy to use and cost effective, it has a great deal of appeal in small business and departments of large organizations. FileMaker shipped over 18 million worldwide copies of our flagship product, FileMaker Pro. We have, a very, we have a very loyal customer base and millions of copies are currently in use, covering a wide range of industries and use cases. FileMaker is a successful, stable company that businesses and education institutions can rely on to be a long-term partner. When deciding to create a custom iPad or iPhone business solution, it just makes sense to choose FileMaker. FileMaker is more than just a database. It's a complete database platform for iPad, iPhone, Windows, Mac, and the web. We have our two flagship products, FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Pro 12 Advanced. Those, these are both applications that allow you to create dat database solutions on your desktop and manage them and then deploy them out to the iPad or iPhone. Also, FileMaker Server 12 and Server 12 Advanced al allow you to host the databases in a central, secure location and share them over the internet to 250 or more people simultaneously using FileMaker Pro, FileMaker Pro Advanced, or FileMaker Go. These are just a sample of some of our education customers. We are in the largest 250 K-12 school districts, and some of the Bigger names you might recognize here, Pasco County Schools, Montgomery County Public Schools, the School District of Philadelphia, Broward County Public Schools, and many, many others. We have a great success story on our website from Dodge City Public Schools. You can see this quote from Ray Whip, Executive Director of Information Management, Dodge City Public Schools. Our single multifaceted FileMaker solution, which integrates information for both administration and learning, has resulted in substantial savings over five years. You can see a full text of this success story on our website. FileMaker adds value to any environment. We're platform proof. We run on Windows, 
OS 10, iOS. We we work very well in a in a Windows terminal services environment. We we would play very well in Citrix as well as over the web. As far as integrating with your SIS systems, we can co connect directly to a MySQL, Oracle, or SQL Server data source and share information back and forth between FileMaker. We also use ODBC and XML as exchange standards between uh, larger SIS systems as well as desktop systems. And then we use PHP as far as uh, publishing out to the web. These are some examples of some FileMaker applications used in education. Things like student information systems, student records, IEPs, Title I tracking, discipline reporting, course scheduling, event calendaring, teacher and student observations, and much, much more. You'll see some of these in action today as we get further along in the demo. These are some typical FileMaker Go customers that we have out there. We have customers like Arlington Independent School District using FileMaker Go to track their fixed assets across the district. We have the New York City Education Department using it for classroom information, student information system. We have it Montgomery County Public Schools is using it for coursework recommendations, and you can see some of these others. Things like teacher observations and student information as well. These are some quotes from some, from some of our larger school districts as, as to what they think about FileMaker. You can see these great quotes along with all of the awards that we've won along the bottom. We've won many awards in the industry from PC Magazine, Editor's Choice, and PC Pro Recommended. We also have Pharmaca Pro vol Volume Licensing Programs. Make sure you go visit our website to, to get the best pricing on, on for education pricing. We have different flavors of education volume license programs, and make sure you do specify volume license program if you're purchasing more than five units at a time you'll receive a discount as well as a year of free maintenance. We also have an educational annual volume license agreement, education site license, and educational annual site license as well. So now we're going to get in and actually uh, demo the product. So let's go in here and set up this scenario. We've got, I've been given two spreadsheets, uh, and these are two separate spreadsheets that came from two, two different di uh, departments within the district, and one is student information. I've got student ID, first and last name, uh, grade, allergies, uh, what action that you need to take if there's an allergy, what bus number they're on, uh, the number of days absent that they've had so far, their GPA, and parent information, things like that. I've also got a classes file here that came out of the uh, student information system as well. Uh, this, uh, this stuff all, all came out of a PeopleSoft SIS system. And again, I've got student ID number, but I don't have any student name. I've got room number, what course title, and period that, that uh, these students are assigned to throughout the course of the day. My job is to make sense of both, both of these two and deploy it out to an iOS device so that my teachers can go around the building, and if they see students uh, wandering the halls, they can see exactly where they're supposed to be, if they've got allergy issues, if they need to get them to the correct bus in time, things like that, and they'd like to be able to do all this using their mobile device. So I'm going to close these two windows down, and I'm going to go over here, and the first thing I want to do is take this student's file, and I'm going to simply drag it down on top of FileMaker Pro, and it says, hey, this is a spreadsheet. What do you want me to do with it? Would you like me to use that first row of field names? or data. In this case, it happens to be field names, so I'll say OK. I'm going to change this to st just students. I'm going to save it on my desktop. And quickly and easily now, I've converted a spreadsheet over into a database. How many of you have ever gone in and tried to sort a column in a spreadsheet and realized that you've missed a column in the spreadsheet and suddenly you've uncoupled all your data? Makes for a, a not fun afternoon. FileMaker will not allow you to do that because when we convert a database or a spreadsheet into a database, we attach a record ID to each cell in the database, each cell in the spreadsheet, so that when you do things like sorting, you don't uncouple your data. So I can sort by grade, 
I can then do some on on screen reporting. Let's do some things like let's add a trailing group by grade, and you can see I get visual feedback here as to where these uh, grades are breaking out. Let's add a trailing subtotal, which is a count. And again, I can see that there's 60 people in grade six. There's 50 in grade seven. Let's go in and chart that. So let's chart by grade. And I can quickly and easily see a chart of this information. If I want to, I can go in and look at a pie chart. And I can show a legend. I can show values on the chart. We'll do percentages and actual values. And I can actually save this as a layout, which we can use later. Let's switch back over. And when FileMaker actually converted the database, the spreadsheet into the database, it creates two views, a table view, which we were in originally, and a single record view. If I go into the single rep record view, I can simply take a look at each individual record in the database. So, so far I've dragged and dropped. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna turn on sharing. And I'm gonna say sharing over the FileMaker network. I'm gonna select that student's file that I just created. I've got sharing turned on over TCP IP. I'm gonna select all users and I'm gonna say okay. I can then simply switch over to my iOS device and by clicking on this network button up here in the right upper right hand corner, I can see my MacBook Pro and when I click on this, it's going to navigate the network and it's going to find that student's file that I just created. I'm going to open it up. And now I've got that database. I dragged and dropped, turned on sharing, and now I'm sharing this database over the network to my iOS device. Any changes I make, let's switch over here and go to the first record. And you'll notice that I've got William Powell on both records. The one on the left is my computer, the one on my right is my iOS device. I can simply click in the iOS field and let's change that name to Smith. M-I-T-H. I click out of the record and you'll notice that it updates the record from my iOS device. I've updated the record on my computer. This could be done if it's in the, in the centrally hosted solution. I could be anywhere in the district, change a record, and automatically update that record over the, over, the, uh, over the computer. All right, so let's do a couple other things. Let's build this out to be a little bit more iOS-like. So if you notice, when it built it out, when FileMaker built this, this layout, it made it as a computer layout. So it's got smaller fields and smaller data points and things like that to take advantage of the pointer touch. But let's go into layout mode, which is where you design elements for the iPad or iOS device. And we've got stencils that are available to you. We've got iPhone as well as iPad stencils. In this case, I'm going to stick to an iPad landscape stencil. And I'm going to simply drag this layout over to the edge of the stencil to fill up my iPad screen. And you'll notice when I save that and exit it, I've affected that change on my iOS device as well. Let's do a couple more things. Let's add some, uh, we'll go back into layout mode. And I'm gonna, we've got in here, we've got some things called themes. And themes are different color styles that we've set up with different color pat palettes, cascading style sheets. And within each of these groups, we've got some regular, regular desktop themes and some touch themes. If you notice the touch themes are larger, larger font sizes, larger buttons, larger fields. In this case, I want to select, I can select river or I can select river touch. Let's select river touch. I'm going to select all these fields, make them larger, and let's clean up the database a little bit. So let's take, let's go in here and let's move GPA up here by grade. Let's take the uh, days absent. We'll move it up here. You'll notice I get feedback when I'm moving the fields around so I can line them up correctly and make everything look nice. I'm going to take this bus number field and we'll move it uh, up here as well. And let's get rid of that. And we'll just put the bus number in here. 
move that over. And what I want to do now is let's go in and add a tabbed interface because I want to take more advantage of the real estate on the iOS device. So let's just quickly drag out a tab. I'm going to put in parent information. and schedule. And let's make this fully justified and uh, width of the widest label. We'll say OK. I can now drag this information here into that tabbed interface. Let's move the tab over here and let's see what it looks like on my iOS device. So let's save that exit, and you'll notice that I've got a parent information uh, re regarding each of these students, and if I switch over to my iOS device, you'll be able to see it, that it's there as well, and I can click through the records on my iOS device and show those that parent information in a, uh, in a tabbed interface. So I'm beginning to take a little bit better use, make a little bit better use of the screen real estate on an iPad. So, got a couple other things that I want to do. We've noticed that there's a correlation between the number of days absent and the uh, uh, truancy factor, the, the, the number of incidents that are created by students that have uh, greater than five days absent. We also uh, want to be able to highlight some things like uh, peanut allergies and any time that there's a uh, note where it says to call 911 in case of a bee sting. We want to be able to highlight these things so that the teachers as they're walking around can quickly and easily see those things and uh, respond to them. So let's go back into edit layout mode. And I'm going to right click on this days absent and I'm going to add a conditional formatting. I'm going to add a business rule here that says if the value is greater than or equal to 5, let's make it bold and red. Let's say OK. Under the uh, allergies, I'm going to right click again and I'm going to set up a format that says if the value is containing peanuts, let's make the fill color yellow. And if the action is contains the word 911, let's make the fill color uh, blue. And we'll say OK. I'm going to save these changes, exit out, and you'll notice now that the hot blue is highlighted because it says call 911. If I click on here, you notice that uh, peanuts is uh, selected, so I know that there's a peanut allergy, and this person also has a, a day's absent of seven days uh, this year. So we really need to make sure we uh, keep an eye on this person because uh, they've, they've been absent more than, than five days this, uh, this year. So. Uh, Chances are they're, they're, they may be wandering the halls aimlessly. Let's do a couple other things. I want to fight, figure out the schedule for these folks. So we've still got that class schedule out in that spreadsheet. So let's go over, and instead of dragging and dropping, this time I'm going to import records from a file. And if I go down here to the classes folder that we used before, I can open it up. I'm going to create a new table called classes. And let's import that in. And you'll notice that I've got 125 uh, class records. Uh, I've got student ID, but I, I don't know, have any idea who this student is. Uh, all I know that they need to be in room 110, which is orchestra, strict, orchestra 6 at period 3, but I have no idea who this person is. So let's go back over here, and we'll go into Manage Database. And this is where you add the, the uh, data rules, the rules and everything to the, to the database. So let's go back into Database here. And you'll notice that now I've got the two tables that we imported in, students and classes. These used to be spreadsheets. Now they're database tables. Within those tables, I've got fields. And I've got the classes and the students uh, fields. And over here, I have a visual representation of the two spreadsheets that are now database tables. I can relate these two together by simply taking the ID student to the ID student over here in classes. And when that equals up, I want to bring over all the related records. We'll just say OK. I've just now programmed a relational database. Haven't written any code yet. And so now I can switch back over to layout mode, take what we call our portal tool, draw a portal. Even though we're in the student 
table, I can draw a window over to the classes table to see what classes these students are in. I can sort this by uh, period. And I want to show a vertical scroll bar. I want an alternated background fill. And I want five records. We'll say OK. I want to bring over the period, the room number, and the course title from the classes field database. We'll say OK. Click over here. And you notice now, as I click through each individual record, I can see what period it is, what room number they're supposed to be in, and what uh, class that is that's associated with them. And again, if I switch over to my iPad, you can see the same thing uh, here. So I can click on the, on the student records and see uh, the, the schedule uh, of students' uh, information here. Uh, we're having a little refresh issue here on the, uh, on the iPad, but um, Okay, so anyway, so what we've got going now is I want to be able to bring in a picture of the students and have it display on the screen as well so I can actually verify that these people are who they say they are when, I, when they are confronted in the hallway. So I've got a folder full of photos here. And again, I've just got things like uh, these JPEG images or PNG images of students. I want to be able to import them in and match them up with the student uh, ID uh, field here. So I know again, I've got this student ID. I want to figure out how to put his picture over here. So this time, we'll import again. And this time, instead of from a file, let's import a whole folder. And I'm going to import from that photos folder. We'll say OK. Let's create a new table called photos and import that in. Notice it brought in 16 photos. I've got a high res, a thumbnail image, a file path, a file name, and a, and a high res image. Now this file name, as I told you before, happens to be the student ID, but it's got some extra information in the field which I really don't need. And if I tried to match that up with a student ID, it wouldn't match because it's not an identical match. So I could go through each record and delete these out, but that would take a lot of effort. So I'm going to have FileMaker do the heavy lifting for me. And I'm going to go back into Manage Database. And I'm going to access our, in the Photos library, I'm going to access our calculation engine. So I'm going to create a new field called ID. And let's make sure this is a calculation field. I've got all sorts of different functions by name. I can sort these out by text functions, number functions, date, uh, summary functions, logical functions, mobile functions. In this case, I want to just use a text function called get as number uh, get as number and I just want and I want to use that file name and I want to just have it return just the number that's in that file name when I said oh when I click OK it added that ID field to me here and you'll notice now uh, that it stripped out the extra information that I don't need. So let's go back into Manage Database. And we'll go back into that relationship graph. And let's now match up the ID with the student ID field again. Again, I just created another relational join without writing any code. I'm going to say OK. I can now go into layout mode, select my field tool, drag it out. I want to select that photos, that file from the photos table. Let's say OK. I can quickly and easily pull this down, resize it, save it, and exit it. And now you'll notice that I've got photos associated with each of these students, so I can actually verify that Russell Johnson is who he says he is. And if I switch back over to the iOS device, you'll notice I've got that same information there as well. And again, I also have access to that chart that we created earlier on my iPad. So I can see charting of uh, individual grade counts. I can do charts of absences during the day, uh, average GPAs, things like that. But I, I have access to the full charting engine on my iOS device as well. So with that, 
I'm going to switch gears and we're going to switch over to Rosemary. And Rosemary's actually going to show you some finished solutions on the iPad. And then she's also going to switch over and uh, show you some of the starter solutions that are available to help you get started quickly in FileMaker. Rosemary? Hi, thanks, Darren, for that great introduction to FileMaker. Um, just before I jump into my demos, I just want to say a few more words about the technical um, things you need to do to connect from FileMaker to a student information system. In general, you make that connection using ODBC or JDBC connectivity to the enterprise database. And using our external SQL sources technology, you can make a live connection to systems hosted on, File on Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, or MySQL. And that ma um, matches up to many of the common um, student information systems in use in larger school districts. Um, and then all you do is you make a server-to-server -server connection use between your FileMaker server and the, the SIS server. And um, FileMaker will then honor whatever level of access your users have. So if a user has permission to update records in the SIS, they'll be able to do it through the FileMaker interface as well. And if they do not have permission to make updates, but they can see only selected data or see all data, they'll be able to see whatever their rights permit them to. With other systems that are not hosted on those three data stores, you can use ODBC import and make updates either by doing a direct import into FileMaker or doing as Darren did and exporting the data out of the SIS into an Excel or um, tab delimited format and then importing it into FileMaker. And I'm happy to answer any other questions about those types of connections at the end of the demo. So now I'm going to switch gears and we'll talk about a few more examples of what you can do with FileMaker Go. First, I have an example from our partner in Resonance. In Resonance has built um, Keystone, which is a student information system used by many private schools around the world. And in addition to their flagship FileMaker pro product, they have a few systems that help users take data to Go. So one example is go take pictures. You know, so in the administration tool here, I would sync up from Keystone and download a group of students for whom I need to take pictures. And then I'll switch out of FileMaker and go over to showing my iPhone. And once I'm showing my iPhone, you can see as I look through, several of these students already have pictures taken, but a few don't. So with the um, iOS interface, I can tap down in the bottom, find the missing pictures, and I see I have two students who do not have photos. And I can go in and I can insert a photo. I can use the camera on the device and take a, take a picture if I have a small photo studio set up. Or I can browse my own um, library of photos on my iOS device and insert the photo. So here I've now added a photo of Rachel. And here we'll also add a photo to this other student. And again, we'll use this one this time. And now I've added those, those photos back into the database. If I say find missing, I get a notice that there aren't any. So now I'll just go and show all of my students again. And then once you've taken all those pictures, there's a utilities era, area, and I can sync these back up with Keystone when I'm all done and get those photos into the student information system. Um, in Resonance also has um, utilities for things like field trips, where a teacher going out on a field trip can pull down the students and their emergency contact information onto their iOS device so that they have it with them when they're out and away from the school. So now I've extended my student information system. Now let me extend some of the other systems in the school. Um, first, I'm going to stop sharing um, my iPhone and share my iPad. And here on my iPad, I have a few different systems. The first was built by our partner at Full City Consulting in upstate New York. And they've built a system for a school district to enable um, principals and other school managers to do evaluations of their teachers. 
So if I tap into um, Rosemary's, um, my own evaluation, and click Edit, um, the administrator can go through all of the areas of teaching, like um, for planning and preparation, demonstrating knowledge of the students, setting instructional outcomes, demonstrating knowledge of resources, and so on, and give that teacher a score for each area. If they need some more information about that particular area, you can tap the overview and get some more information about how a teacher works in the planning and preparation. You can go to another domain in the classroom environment and hide the overview and bring it back up. Bring up specific details for this particular environment and make sure, well, is the teacher, what does this teacher do? How do I rate ineffective, developing effective, or highly effective? And go through all the areas on this um, evaluation. And once you've finished the evaluation, um, the, the teacher being evaluated can log into this evaluation system and make comments and provide documents if they have questions or want to dispute that evaluation. And overall, you'll notice at the very top um, is the score for each domain that has been given to this teacher and how they're doing on the 15 point scale. Um, for each domain where they're being evaluated. So let me close that one and now I'm going to bring up um, the student success management system and this was provided by our partner Grant Cleveland in Florida. Let me just log in and this system has some security on it. If you, as soon as you log in, you must um, re-enter your credentials. And in fact, if you set down the iPad, walk away and come back to it, it's got a very short timeout. So teachers will always need to re-log into this system. You know, this is um, a system that will help you um, reduce the amount of paperwork you have to do um, and collect effective data about students with special needs. So let me start in the administration area, and I'm going to make go to go over to students, and I'm going to create a new student, and we'll call this student Rosemary. And I can fill in a few names. You know, she goes by Rosie, and I can fill in some other things. You know, what parent information and so on. But then set up this student. This um, Rosie is in K through two and she does have disabilities. She's been identified as autistic, and before I select that, if you look at the bottom, I can touch right there to bring up a website that shows the federal government's de definition of autis autism, and I can go through and then deaf, blind, no, she's not deaf. She has, you know, other learning disabilities as well, but I can scroll through or tap through and specify exactly what um, disabilities Rosie has as I go through. And now I get some suggested um, queries and actions. Um, since Alice has no other disabilities, um, this is now generated an inventory of IEP and FBA goals that will be likely for, for us to track for Rosie. Of course, you can come back in and customize all of these goals for each student if that's appropriate. And now that we've got the student set up, let's go back and go into the, the actual day and collect data in the classroom. And I'm finding I can't get to Rosie. So let's pick Abby here. And so during the day, we'll look through, through the day and see what um, specific things Abby did first thing in the morning and then during the morning morning circle throughout the day and fill out that yes, she did take a seat when instructed, said good morning or waved, said her name and waved during the song, and so on. And then over, to, over the course of many, many days of data collection, you can go in and track how is the student doing over time. You know, so for example, if we look at taking a seat when instructed with less than three verbal cues, you know, over the course of the school year, um, 
she's been good and bad, but you can definitely see a, a trend over time as you collect more and more data. And so in the very end, this system can help you um, build a baseline inventory of data points, eliminate paperwork and spreadsheets because you're collecting everything in a central location. Um, you've got very little interaction and can very quickly satisfy requirements for working with each student. And my final example is something built by one of my um, my teammates here at FileMaker. And this is something that's more educationally focused and student facing. Um, this is again a system built using FileMaker, but you can see we're using very rich graphics to make something that really looks like an I iOS app rather than a database running on an iPad device. So I can log in, here I'm logged in as a guest, or I can log in as, you know, another another student, add players, delete players, and what this does is it does arithmetic quizzing. So I can choose multiplication, addition, subtraction, what level do I want to do tens or one hundreds and how many questions, and then start the test. And now the test presents me with the questions. I can go through and tap on the correct answer. And if I get something wrong, I get an error, and you'll notice down in the lower left, I, my score changes. I can skip a question if I want to, if I don't know the answer. And there, once I've answered all the questions, I get a notice. I can email the results of this to my friends if I'm challenging them to tests. Or I can look. And so you'll notice here I've only done this once as Gary, so I've only got one score. But if I go back to my guest account, you'll see over time, that several different tests have been taken and I can specify a specific test and get what were the questions and what was answered right or wrong. I can email those results out to a teacher again by tapping email and sending back a PDF. I can add a signature and say yes, um, he did do his work, prove that he did, sign the homework and send it back and go back. And see also at the very bottom a chart of how the student has done over time on that particular um, math quiz. And so that is all I have for my iOS demos. And now I just want to go in and show a little bit more about FileMaker overall. So I'm going to open up FileMaker Pro Advanced again. And I'm going to bring up our Quick Start screen. And in the Quick Start screen, I've got the area over on the left where I can choose how I want to make a new database. And one option is to use a starter solution. And there are several starter solutions that can be used in administration. So for example, rather than starting from scratch with my student database, I could select the contract contact starter solution, choose that, and make a new database, and then either manually type in data or import data from Excel or from your student information system. And these are fully unlocked solutions, so you can go in to manage a database and make changes to fields by adding fields or deleting fields you don't need, and so on. And one, the final thing I wanted to mention is that our website has several, um, several resources for K-12 education. I've gone to the solutions and looked at solutions by industry and selected K-12. So there's many resources here. And then there's also a link to third-party solutions like the um, Keystone product from InResonance where our partners have developed solutions specifically for the K-12 market. And on the Made for FileMaker area of our website, you can see screenshots and read more and get contact information to contact the developers of these specific solutions. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Darren for a few final thoughts and the Q&A portion of the, of the session. OK. First of all, I'm going to uh, 
throw up this resources slide, which we'll go over here in a minute. But first of all, let's uh, let's ask some just, let's go over some questions uh, that have come in. Uh, can I create databases using FileMaker Go, or do I need FileMaker Pro? And so you do need FileMaker Pro to create databases. FileMaker Pro is what we call the authoring environment, where you build databases and then you deploy them to um, FileMaker Pro users or FileMaker Go clients, or you host them on FileMaker Server, and then they can be accessed by all of those clients. So my work group is small. Do I need FileMaker Server? Um, we do recommend that you use FileMaker Server if the data is mission critical. You can share peer-to-peer um, -peer with FileMaker Pro, as Darren did in his demo. Um, but that is kind of better for ad hoc sharing or you know quick demonstrations, um, simply because FileMaker Server is optimized for for hosting a database to multi users, whereas FileMaker Pro um, is not. Um, FileMaker Server also includes things like backup capabilities and automatic um, scripting and backups, so that you have better database um, redundancy. And we do have hosting partners if you do not have the resources to build a build and maintain a FileMaker server for yourself. We do have third-party partners that do offer FileMaker hosting at a fairly low cost per month. Okay. Uh, what kind of files can I store in FileMaker Pro? Uh, so as Darren demonstrated, you can store pictures in FileMaker Pro. Um, FileMaker Pro can also store PDFs, Word documents, Excel files, pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, any computer file can be stored and managed in a FileMaker database. So students can submit their work or keep an art portfolio in FileMaker, or you can store other documents related to your work with students. Okay, I'll take this one. Uh, is there special pricing for education customers? Uh, yes, there is special pricing uh, for uh, education. It's roughly 40% uh, off of uh, government and, and uh, corporate pricing. And we have two different types of licensing. One is uh, volume license pricing, which is based on quantities. If you have a quantity of five or greater, uh, the price goes down as the quantity goes up. That includes one year of uh, maintenance free of charge. So if we ship any new versions within that first year, uh, you'll get that free of charge. We also have an annual license program, which is exactly one third of the cost of the volume license program. And it's more of a pay as you go. So you just pay for it annually, the same price each year. And each year you receive maintenance as well. If you decide you don't want to use FileMaker anymore, you simply uninstall and uh, stop, and you don't pay the annual fee anymore after that. So where does the server, did we already answer, where does the server live? Is it in-house server? Uh, it, the answer to that, I think Rosemary said, can be an in-house or a hosted server. Uh, in-house, you can host it on a, uh, on a PC or a Macintosh, and you can, uh, or you can serve it uh, out from a hosted uh, location as well. Is there a record limitation with the amount that FileMaker can store? Um, FileMaker doesn't really have any set limit to the number of records you can have in a FileMaker database. Um, the, the limit is really what is the capacity of the disk space and performance of the server where you're hosting your FileMaker database. The theoretical size limit of a FileMaker database is 20 terabytes. Um, but I don't know that we have any customers that have reached anything close to that limit. Okay. Um, if we use the database through a web interface with users logging in, does each user need a FileMaker Pro product? Um, if you use the database, if you host it on FileMaker server and set up a web interface, no, there the browser is the client. Um, there are limitations to accessing a database through the browser, though. Um, the biggest one is that printing, you, you lose the capability to do things like print and save records as a PDF. 
um, simply because your printing interface is then through the browser rather than through the FileMaker um, application. Okay. Uh, let's see, the best place to find classes or training for learning FileMaker products. Uh, the best place to find classes or training is on our website, uh, www.filemaker.com uh, forward slash support and training. Uh, while we're there, let's go over a couple of other, uh, and we'll wait for some more questions to come in. Uh, FileMaker Go is free, uh, free from the App Store. You just go to www.filemaker.com products forward slash FileMaker Go. Uh, that'll take you to the App Store. Uh, then you download for FileMaker Go for iPhone or iPad. Uh, this session today will be recorded as well as uh, previously recorded web seminars. They are available on our website at FileMaker.com forward slash support forward slash webinars. So this, uh, if you want to have other people in your organization see this, uh, this is being recorded so you'll be able to see it later. Uh, again, FileMaker training resources, FileMaker.com slash support slash training, and they have a self-paced training as well as uh, local classes you can take as well as uh, uh, online training courses as well. And again, the Dodge City School success story, it's a great success story for uh, K-12. Uh, that is on our FileMaker.com solutions slash customer stories, and it's got a full uh, full success story about how they've uh, really saved a lot of money uh, using FileMaker. I think that's it for the questions. I think we're going to take this time to uh, thank everybody for coming and follow up with any questions you have. You can email us. Uh, we will send out a follow-up email. You can respond with any questions you have and we'll be happy to uh, share those with you. With you. Uh, in addition, we are going to share the uh, the company names of the companies that uh, of the solutions that we showed at the end of the demo today, you'll uh, you'll be able to see uh, those third-party developers that created those products. Again, thanks for attending the webinar today.